Well, here it's May uh, 6th. I just came back from a trip up to visit Bruce, as you saw in an earlier video. And uh, I've got to straighten out these tanks today. Uh, Pam is ready to get into it, and so am I. And I wanted to give you a view of what these tanks look like before we start cleaning them up. And uh, talk about the growth, the, the forest uh, treatment that I seem to advocate for, as opposed to Bruce's beautiful gardens that he does. And Pam and I were watching that almost uh, after 11 o'clock last night, of all things, when they finally got posted. And uh, it's inspiring to see how beautiful his tanks are uh, versus the type of uh, aquascape that you find here. The fish are fine. Uh, they don't have any problem, but the, the plantings just overtake the tank. And so you see off in the back over here, that planting that I talk about from Disc Madness that has just overgrown and keeps growing and growing and growing. And uh, in their particular tank situation, it was just a single mother plant, if you will, in the middle of the tank. And it looked gorgeous. If I had nothing else in this tank and just put that in the center, that's what it would look like. And like I said, uh, I asked the guy if he were to sell that, which I don't think he wanted to, what he'd sell it for. And back in my mind, I was figuring about $99, and he came up with the exact same number. And so that, this, I think it's a Wiggia type plant, but it's got beautiful red leaves on it. And uh, I don't think the video really does it justice, but you can sort of see what I'm talking about back here. And it, it just is so thick. You would think that more babies, since I've got so many guppies and swordtails and mollies in here, uh, would be having babies up in that protective overgrowth. But I don't really see that. And there's a couple of the guppies that I, <clears throat> the type that I brought up to Bruce, as you saw in the bag, with the red tails. He had a nice selection of guppies. I didn't realize he had guppies. I didn't think he was into them as much as he is the tetras and the other uh, non-live bearing fish. And so we, Pam and I were just talking about the uh, sword tails are doing very well here and most of these sword tails are ones that have grown up from our babies here. And so we're very pleased with that. I, I enjoy sword tails and as I said once before, uh, for a long time it was like uh, we couldn't find them. And then all of a sudden they became uh, common again and you could find them easily. And this is on the dark side because, again, the plants are shading this. And uh, here's that same plant now, just cuttings that have been moved over to this corner. And as you can see, it grows up and blocks the light. And so that's what we've got to correct here because I like Kabamba, and the Kabamba is sort of scraggly as it tries to survive in that shade. Reaching out, as you see across the top here, uh, to get to the light. But as opposed to the lush, full growth that a Kabamba normally has, these are kind of scraggly. And so uh, by the time we get cleaned up, it'll look quite different. So I want to capture this first and uh, see what it looks like after we get through. The Amazon sword plant back here is was the centerpiece, but now it's overgrown with these other plants and it's sort of lost back there. But it's there and it's huge and uh, that's one of Bruce's strongest growing plants. That's why he was looking to see if he could sell some, at least for a store credit. Uh, uh, so he took two along, and like I said, the one store was closed, so we didn't get to test that one. But the other guy offered him $8 for it. Not that $8 was a big deal, because every fish he had, it was a store credit, every fish he had was like, I thought, about three times what the cost would be elsewhere. Guppies, I didn't see any male guppies that were less than $9.98 a piece. And that's a ridiculous price in my mind. They were, there were nothing really fancy beyond what we have here. And uh, so even if you look at the split tails uh, that we see right there, um, I mean, these, I think, are prettier than the ones he had was selling for 10 bucks. And you would be hard-pressed to find a female to go along with it. So we had a great visit, and this is the day after, and uh, looking forward to sharing what this looks like when we get through. A 
this is the corner tank you're looking at. That pie-shaped one in the corner here, 55 gallon. Okay, this is the corner tank after my gardener and spouse Pam uh, reworked the tank. And instead of that huge forest, you have a very beautiful, colorful, well-groomed uh, tank that really focuses on that huge Amazon sword plant. I'll get a closer look at that from above uh, by the time we're through. But I also wanted to point out how everything else complements both the colors and the shapes of the different types of leaves. Everything from the vowel plants off to the left to the kabamba, the soft fern right behind it. You see more of that colorful, I think it's a Ludwigia plant, I could be wrong, behind there, giving some color past it. But this is a deep tank. I've often described it as a pie-shaped. And so the tank goes back probably about 18 inches. And so she's planted quite a bit of that red Ludwigia in the back beyond uh, the other plants. And that'll grow up just like the one on the right here is and start filling in some color behind that Amazon sword. And there's that plant that I keep talking about. It keeps growing and uh, I swear we could bundle it up and make some money at one of the fish stores, but I haven't bothered doing that yet. And then there's the Amazon sword, which is gorgeous and uh, like I said, I'll get a shot of it in a minute. The fish are much more visible. I, I don't know that they like uh, the space or whether they like the forest effect that I had before. I don't know, but certainly you can see that one, I've got too many fish in here, but uh, they keep populating, especially the guppies, and they are beautiful fish, and so th you can see them much better here. And hopefully uh, some close-ups will give you some insight as to what they look like. Especially the sword tails are growing out. I told you it was a problem some time ago. Sword tails seem to be sparse. And uh, we've been able to get quite a few different types. And they've spawned nicely. So I'm very pleased with the way this tank looks. Uh, especially after she does her magic, if you will. And uh, i got to say, uh, that much like Bruce would recommend, uh, there were... Uh, literally a bucket full of leaves and pieces of plants that when she got through. And so this is certainly a community tank and everybody seemed to get along just fine. In our conversation with Bruce we talked about the fact that these um, Indian algae eaters that you see with the black stripe point coming up uh, on the glass right there uh, do a great job and uh, they tend to chase some of the other loach type fish, the red tailed shark, the tricolored sharks, and so forth, and uh, just join them at the mouth and swim right along with them. They don't seem to damage them. He feels that they may be trying to eat off some of the uh, mucus that's on the side of some of these fish. Uh, certainly, his discus were an example of that. And then Pam actually realized there were some babies in here. And so she went back and took some of the plants that she had pulled out and left them floating up here at the top, as you can see, just by way of offering some protection uh, for babies. Not that babies would really thrive in this particular environment. There's just so many fish. But they do make it once in a while, and I can see a couple of them look like black molly babies right up there. And I don't think you're going to be able to see them in the video. They're just too small. So anyway, this is uh, the after picture and uh, compare that with what you saw just before in the before. And here's that promised view of that beautiful Amazon sword. Uh, if there's one leaf on there, there's got to be 30 leaves on it. And if Bruce was able to get $8 for one of his, which were very nice, this one's got to be a $50 plant. And so just give you a different view, especially of that uh, red, I call it Ludwigia. We did also move the Madagascar lace plant, which was in the shadows and not doing all that well, out to the front and hopefully those leaves will start to develop uh, broader 
now that they're exposed. Very nicely done, Pam. Really enjoy what she does, as you'll see in the next scene with the bow tank. Now this is the bow tank, and uh, we have the same problem, and I put quotes around the problem, because it's, it's only a problem because we're doing so well with the plants. Uh, you see a lot of that same plant uh, that's been cut and put over here, and it does tend to take over the tank. I mean, you, you could literally have this plant and no other plants in there, and it would fill the tank. And so you can see how it really grows out, and then I keep cutting and putting in uh, small bunches of it, like here, that continue to grow out and fill up their corner of the tank. Uh, so I've got to do something because we have some new plants uh, that I told you last time we put in here that need more light. And uh, fish are doing fine. I just lost a neon the other day. And uh, as you saw in the visit with Bruce, we both lost a beautiful black angel. Uh, in just the same day for some reason or other. And then we have the uh, Aponagia, is it? That frilly lime-colored plant that is doing so well. Uh, it, ten it tends to look better when it's bunched together, but it's got good, uh, well, I'm trying to say a dozen leaves on it right now. And then over in the corner you have uh, a plant that is fighting for light and so it's growing out uh, you can barely see it but it's really doing well as far as growth goes I don't know what we're going to do when we take some of these plants out or I, I hate to take plants out that's not my thing Bruce is very uh, mobile with his plants let me say because as he talked about even trying to catch fish he takes all the plants out of those 10-gallon tanks, and then he can catch any fish he wants, and then replants them. And uh, he said it takes about 45 minutes per uh, tank. And given what he's dealing with with his Parkinson's these days, I can under certainly understand that. It, it's an inspiring thing to go visit him and see how he's dealing with his health challenges in a very positive way. I mean, spending an hour a day exercising uh, I should be doing the same, there's no question about that. So I walk away with inspiration and uh, should be doing it. But anyway, this is uh, sort of where it's at before Pam gets uh, doing her gardening and uh, I'll clean out the filters and uh, you can see that's one pearl gourami. The other tank that you just saw has about eight very small pearl gouramis. I'm I was hoping they would grow faster and I'd move them over here and have a school of them. Uh, but uh, this one has been around a long while. And uh, that's, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So, uh, just so you know. And now we're looking at the aftershot of the bow tank, 55-gallon bow tank. And again, how different it looks, both in terms of the vibrant colors, uh, the shapes, and... Uh, types of leaves on these different plants. We have a couple in here that we try to uh, develop a little bit more of. So for example, if you look at the uh, red kabamba, and we've had more success with this in other times, but we still have a strand here that uh, she's moved out where it gets plenty of light, and so we're hoping that that'll develop and some of the other kabambas right in front of it, the green kabamba. This has uh, three of the Amazon sword plants in here that continue to do very well, but they're kind of hidden. She's got them bunched together in the center and off to the left uh, where that angel is, right below that angel fish. And of course you see more of that red Ludwigia, if I'm calling it. Again, I apologize if I'm saying it wrong. Uh, right in the background. Adds nice color. She's moved it to the back so it's not overcoming the front my forest uh, view did and then right down below uh, you see that plant I just mentioned in the maternity tank as being uh, separated from the pots that they came in now these I just planted uh, 
took it out of the pot and put it in as one plant. But uh, you can pull those apart and get about six or eight plants out of that. And we're seeing how that's going to work out in that uh, other smaller tank. And then maybe I'll do the same thing here. But you can certainly see the Amazon sword doing well, the, sh the shorter one. And there's different varieties of these. So some grow up uh, really thick and high, and others like this one are almost like a pygmy. But you can see how thick the basis of the basic uh, base of this plant is. And then we still have that Apavagia, is it? Uh, the Philly, the, the yeah, lime green uh, curly leaves that you see right here. It's a little bit behind the Kabamba, so it's a little bit hidden, uh, but it's got plenty of light now, so we'll see how that grows out. The tetras are schooling beautifully now that we've opened up the top of the tank. And so you'll see a couple schools of different types of tetras here. Right down in front, for example. And then right down here you can see there's a, a, a log in the, one of the I'm not sure if it's a tricolored shark or, or the red tail shark. No, it's the red tail shark coming out of his home. And he's going back in now. So we've got a couple of hiding places for these fish, uh, not the least of which is over here past that tricolored shark uh, in that looks like a, a, a rock. It's really uh, a cave uh, that you see there. But the uh, clown loaches, when we had them in here, remember they got decimated with ick, and I lost them here, and I'm afraid to move the ones from the office tank into here because of that ick history, and they're doing so well in the office tank. But the net result is they have a place to hide. And then just to the right of that, we've got these, this corner, dark uh, reddish-brown plant that uh, does very well, and I don't know if it, I've seen it at Hidden Reef grow up and take over a tank. And I don't know if the height of these leaves are because it was hidden before and the leaves were forced up to try and get the light, or whether that's just the natural growth as the plant matures. Not really sure. And so that's the work of a gardener. And uh, you see the three angels we have left. We talked about the fact that Bruce lost one of his black angels and I lost our black angel. Uh, sorry about that. They are so beautiful. Uh, it's really sad to see them go. They, they last so long. I don't know what happened. And so this is the, the after effects of a gardener taking over the tank. Trimmed a lot of things so there's not a lot of height here, and yet we were surprised. Uh, recently uh, she did that uh, probably about three weeks ago. And I was so disappointed because everything was so low. There was no height in the plants. And by the time, as you saw in the before shot of this tank, uh, the plants had grown up to the top to a point where they were blocking the light and everything. And so again, we've got the open space in the top there where that school of tetras are going by, for example, um, that open up for the fish to be able to really swim around. And uh, in a couple of weeks, that'll be filled in again and she'll have to do some more. Uh, oh, hey, look, look down here. Um, got a couple of killifish down here that really are trying to mate. I don't know how that would ever work in a community tank, but you see the male, and the he's shaking, and I'm not sure if he's dropping uh, silt on the eggs, because the female will be down there with him. Yeah, she's right under him, and so... Uh, we have a mating thing going on here, and it's never been successful, but I was tempted to put them in the small tank uh, to uh, see if they would breed there, but uh, decided not to. I think they need the, the current, but you can see the two of them. I'll go in even closer. To, I'm not sure if a certain point's going to go out of focus. I'm a good distance away. But you can see how colorful the male is. And they're definitely uh, mating there. I don't know if she's dropping eggs and he's fertilizing them. But uh, 
sure wish I could do that in a separate environment. I don't have the luxury of a bunch of tanks like Bruce does. We're, we're limited uh, in space in this condo we're in, uh, but at the same time, I'm very blessed to have a, a wife that is very involved in the hobby and also tolerant of the fact we have the two large tanks here in the living room and then the two smaller tanks, uh, the maternity tank as I call it, it's also here in the living room, and then they have the, we have the office tank. But look at the color on that mail, isn't that beautiful? Definitely something going on there. How about that? I'm really pleased to be able to catch this on camera. I was tempted to put him in that small tank, but then again I thought, you know, I don't have the uh, feeding. If they, if they actually hatched eggs, uh, the young would be so small they'd need uh, almost micro food of some type. And I've never really been into uh, doing much in terms of raising the micro foods that they would need. So anyway, just wanted to show you the after effects of the gardening in this particular tank. And uh, like I often say, she does a beautiful job. Really appreciate what she can do with a tank. And as much as I like the forest effect, at the same time, I really enjoy Bruce's coloration and the gardening, and those 10 gallon tanks especially. Uh, but lo and behold, uh, by the time she gets through, I gotta say, I think these look pretty damn good, even in comparison to him. And uh, there's, there's a commonality of design in both, as I said when I was interviewing him about his design, the fact that he actually has uh, numbers in his mind of how many to put together. Well, you can see that school of, of uh, Tetris now, huh? And it's so cool to have a school like that. When we were kids, we were lucky to be able to afford one or two fish. And as we've got to be adults, we can actually have a school. Uh, in this case, I think there's a dozen there. Isn't that cool how they, they zoom across like that? I love that. You saw that in Bruce's tanks, too. All right. Well, let's take you into the office for a quick visit there, okay? Here's an end view of that boat tank. You can see that Amazon sword, so beautiful in the corner. And now it's uh, got a backdrop of that red plant. And so you can see just how deep this tank is. I don't know how uh, the depth, or the length rather, of this tank is going to show up in video, but it's, uh, if I zoom in, let's see what happens. There's that frilly, curly leaved plant, nice close up, and you see that uh, red cabamba that I'm hoping will populate itself like it did once before. It's a very beautiful plant. And of course there's that school of tetras. And if we come around to the end of the tank, let's see what we can see here. This is the view you get from our dining room table. And Pam sits down at this end of the table and the angelfish come down and just look at her while she's having breakfast, for example. But again, really nice job with that plant down here in the corner. And hopefully it's going to get enough light to thrive. And again, some of those tetras down here in the corner. And also the uh, uh, rummy nose. Still pretty darn small. From the time we got them, they were much smaller than I expected. But uh, they're doing well. The third tank in the living room, fish room as they call it, is this uh, five gallon, which has a divider so you can split it into two halves, like for bettas, which is what I originally was using this for. And more recently used it as a breeding tank, putting pregnant females in there and then uh, with a lot of floating plants protecting the babies. And they were growing out nicely till I screwed up, as I said in Bruce's video, by adding too much uh, CO2 in here. First time ever I did that and we killed everything that was in it. Uh, the small catfish that we bought for it and all the babies. I only recovered like three out of must have been 30 or 40 fish in here. So big mistake. 
And so right now there's nothing in it, and uh, Pam and I are discussing what to do, what to move in there. And she's suggesting some planting, and I'm thinking maybe one of these pregnant sword tails would do well there. So nothing to show you here. It's uh, starting over again, and uh, totally my mistake. Here's that maternity tank that I said I decimated by adding some CO2 to it, probably too much. And so we've uh, totally changed the water out, blending some water from one of the other established tanks, uh, so it's conditioned. And then moved over a couple of the female sword tails that uh, looked pregnant. They don't look so pregnant here, but I don't see any babies, so maybe I'm too early. But uh, Again, the planting, especially with banana plants, which I like, I haven't seen around for a while. And we also did take that potted plant and separate it into these smaller plantings that you see just to the left. And so that's uh, going to be interesting to see how that grows out. You have an Amazon sword in the center there. And then to the right, some more of that, I'm calling it like wig, it could be wrong, but you get what I'm talking about. And so these two uh, female sword tails seem to be okay in here. As I said, my challenge before was with the black mollies, is they tend to just stay on the bottom. But uh, these are doing much better. We'll see what happens as far as babies go. I did move uh, most of the larger sword tails out of here into the other tanks. But you can still see some of the red babies growing up here. It's mostly guppies. Uh, they do very well here, and the babies thrive and grow up. And so we've got some great split tail guppies there, as you can see. Got quite a, a selection of them now in the other tanks, and look at that black molly. We now have black mollies in all of the tanks. And uh, they're doing rather well, and the young ones are growing up. I'm curious to see if they're going to carry through with that beautiful liar tail that the parents had. And uh, that one male that has a great sail fin right there, in fact, just went out of the range. Very pleased uh, with how they're doing. And the clown loaches, uh, put some feet in there, they come out quite readily, but uh, uh, since I changed the water and uh, freed up the front of this a little bit, they become much more visible. So Pam hasn't had a chance to get, do her work on this one, and I think uh, we're just going to leave this alone. There's enough plants in there to protect the dropped babies. And uh, we'll just see how that all makes out anyway. Hey, just wanted to say thanks for dropping by. I hope you've enjoyed the after, after especially after, <laughs> no, I'm getting that all mixed up. The before and after views of some of these tanks that uh, we every once in a while do a major plant cut back and uh, replanting. And that's what you saw Pam do here. Uh, buried in those fish down there is the electric blue ram. I don't know if you can see him or not. He's, he was there just a minute ago. Anyway, again, thanks for coming by, and uh, stay tuned. We'll have some more in another couple of weeks. Until then, enjoy the hobby, enjoy the spring weather, and uh, safe travels.